Hello folks, my name is Mark. This is Why I Hate the World. How you guys doing? So, the presidential election is coming in about two and a half months, and I think this will be a good time for us to talk about the continuing problem of the Electoral College. So, why do I call it a problem? Well, if you remember, back in 2016, Donald Trump lost the election by three million votes, but he won the Electoral College Thus, he became the president. So the guy who got the less number of votes actually became the president. That to me is a problem. So a quick lesson of what the Electoral College is and where it came from is in order here. So in 1787, when they were putting together the Constitution, they had a couple of problems when it came to selecting the president. Um, a couple of things. First off, well, most people in the country had no idea who any of the candidates were. Because, you know, if you remember, most people in the country lived in rural areas, you know, out in the farms and stuff like that. And they didn't really have any effective mass media at that time. You know, there really wasn't a, a national newspaper or magazine, you know, let alone any types of, you know, mass media that we have today, radio, TV, etc. Right. So um, they figured, well, most people would just be voting for some name on a list that they had no idea of. Right. Um, but the, the main reason why that they didn't use a popular vote model was because of slavery, right? And it was James Madison who brought up the fact that, well, if we used a popular vote model at that time, then the South would never elect a president because a large number of the population of people in the South at that time were slaves. Some Southern states at that time had as many as 50% of the people who lived there were slaves and couldn't vote. Only free men could vote, if you remember. You know, women couldn't vote, uh, slaves couldn't vote, even freed slaves really couldn't vote, right? If you were the son of a slave or a grandfather, you know, a, a grandson of a slave, you couldn't vote. So basically, if only white males who owned property at that time were considered free men who could actually vote. And that meant that, you know, the voting power of the South was diminished because a large part of their population couldn't vote. Even though those people were being counted when it came to calculating their representatives in the House of Representatives. You know, if you remember the three-fifths compromise, you know, slaves were being counted as three-fifths of a person when it came to representation in Congress, but they still couldn't actually vote. So how did they fault solve these problems? Well they came up with the Electoral College, right? And so this meant that when you go to vote for president, you're not actually voting for the president. You're voting for an elector who is appointed, right? Usually by your state legislature, who then goes and votes for the president. And they figured these guys should know at least who they're voting for. And that also solved the problem of the diminished voting power in the South. So love it or hate it that's where it came from right and it seems to me that that's kind of an antiquated system that was made to you know cater to a slave owning minority and we don't really need that anymore especially in this day and age when we don't have slaves we have universal suffrage everybody who's a citizen in this country should should conceivably should be able to vote so why are we still using shit that was designed for fucking slave masters, <laughs> right? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. So anyway, you still do see a lot of people who will defend the Electoral College to their dying breath. And it just so happens that those people tend to be Republicans nowadays. And why do Republicans like the Electoral College so much? Because the last two Republican presidents were elected because of the Electoral College and they lost the popular vote. You know, it wasn't just Trump, you know, you got to remember uh, George W. Bush also lost the popular vote in 2000. And, you know, they had this recount going in Florida, hanging chads, all that stuff, right? The Supreme Court voted among party lines to stop that recount. And that flipped Florida over to the Republicans and George W. Bush became president. Even though, you know, that if that recount would have continued, Right, they would have found Al Gore would have won Florida, <laughs> right? And that's a fact, okay? Because there are ind independent counts of the remaining votes afterwards prove that Al Gore had more votes and he would have become president. So that's, you know, 
It just so happens that the Electoral College have worked out twice for the Republicans now, their last two presidents, so that's why they love it so much. Guaranteed that if, you know, uh, Joe Biden won the Electoral College but lost the popular vote, they'd be against it in a nanosecond. So keep that in mind. All right. Anyway, so one of the things that they talk about is that, well, the Electoral College means that the pres you know, the, the candidates have to go and appeal to a wide variety of people. Right. That means that they can't just go to the major population centers, you know, the big cities in, in, you know, in the country and appeal to them. They have to go and to all these rural areas and stuff, too, and, in, and all these different states and appeal to those guys also. Right. The problem is that's not what happens. You know, that defense is not valid because that's not what happens in real life. In real life, they ignore the large population centers because the large population centers are in solid states, right? They're in states that are either solidly red or blue, and they have to go to states like Oregon and Florida and Pennsylvania and Michigan and shit like that because those states are the swing states. So what ends up happening is that everybody gets ignored except for the swing states. So you know, right now, California is solidly blue, has been since like 1984. Texas is solidly red and it has been for 40 years, you know, a very long time. I don't even know how long, you know, since the 60s at least, right? So, you know, why waste your time trying to go canvas and campaign and talk to people in those states when that, you know, you're, the polls basically say it's going to go one way or the other. It's a waste of time to go try to campaign there. So what you're going to do, you're going to go to the state where the polls say you have a chance of flipping some votes. You're going to go to Ohio. You're going to go to Florida. You're going to go to Michigan or whatever. All the, the swing states. That's why they call them swing states, because they can go one way or the other. Right. If you want to win the election, that's how you do it. So people in you know, already you're being ignored, okay? It, does, it doesn't mean that the candidates have to go to a wide variety of states. The candidates don't go to a wide variety of states. They go to the swing states. They ignore everybody else. So that's already happening, right? Um, the second defense they'll say is that, you know, it keeps the high population areas from always picking the winner. Like if we relied on the, the popular vote model, they would just go to New York and Los Angeles and Houston and Miami and they would just ignore everywhere else in the country, right? Well, like I said, first off, they already ignore those places. They already ignore everything that is in a swing state, so that's not really much of a defense. That, that doesn't apply in real life either. But if we had, number one, if we did have a popular vote model, then it would actually matter. Going to all the small towns everywhere in the country and all the medium-sized cities and things like that would matter just as much as going to the big cities because one vote would, you know, one person, one vote, right? See, right now, we don't have one person, one vote. Right now, where you live in the country, your vote matters more than, you know, if you live in a solidly red or blue state, all right? Because we have a winner-take-all system under the Electoral College, right? So... What they're not getting is that, you know, the, the people that defend the Electoral College and they, they use this to defend it, but what they're not getting is that right now in, say, example, California, there are, you know, California is a solidly blue state. There are millions of Republicans who vote red in California. Their votes are not being counted. Okay, same thing in Texas. In Texas, it's a red state. There are millions of people who vote for Democrats, who vote blue in California. Their votes don't get counted, right? Because the system we have is a winner-take-all system. So the majority of people in that state, you know, if they vote Democratic, right, then those electoral, those electoral votes go to the Democrat. And all of the, you know, millions and millions of people who voted Republican, their votes don't get counted. And the same thing in Texas. In Texas, the same thing, you know, the Democrats don't get counted, right? It's disenfranchising people, okay? That's, that's basically how it's working. Now, if you went with a popular vote model, one, one vote, <laughs> one person, one vote, right? All of those votes count now. And now it makes sense now to go to California, to go to Texas, and to canvas and to talk to people because that's where the people live and you want to get more of them <laughs> on your side, right? So... Yeah, it's like the exact opposite of what these people say is what real life, you know, that's what would happen in real life. 
So another defense they say is that it discounts the small states, right? That if we were in a popular vote model, the small states would never get visited, right? And, you know, the uh, they would, wouldn't have very much of, of electoral power, you know, their voting power wouldn't be very high anyway, and nobody would pay attention to them. Well, you know, no one pays attention to them already because they're small states, okay? They're small states without a lot of you know, electoral votes. So do you think like any politician is going to Rhode Island <laughs> or Hawaii or Alaska? Like, no, They're, they never are, right? Because, you know, they have very, very small, or Wyoming, for example, or, or uh, you know, Minnesota or some shit like that. You know, no, they're not, okay? They're not going to any of those places and talking to any of those people because right now they you know those states have very very few electoral votes so that really wouldn't change you know it really wouldn't change very much but you know it would actually under a popular vote model you know would actually behoove you to stop off of those places and at least maybe throw a rally or talk to a couple of people because suddenly their votes count now <laughs> their votes count see that's that's the thing i, I don't see any way that the electoral college is superior to a popular vote model nowadays, right? It doesn't make any sense to me, and, you know, unless your goal is to disenfranchise people, right? If your goal is to keep people from voting and to not, you know, have everybody's vote be equal, it makes perfect sense, right? But if you actually want everyone's vote to be the same, if you want my vote in California to mean the same as somebody else's vote in Ohio, right, which is how it should be, then the only alternative we have is a popular vote model. You know, we're supposed to be the same in this country, right? We're supposed to be equal in the United States. Every citizen is supposed to have the same rights, right? The same rights, okay, we're supposed to have the same, you know, um, under the law, we're supposed to be the same, we're supposed to have the same opportunities, even though we don't, <laughs> right? You know, every one of us, they tell us when we're kids, you know, if you work hard, you grow up, you can, every single one of you guys can go off and be a senator or even be the president and all that shit. And it's like, in real life, that's bullshit, okay? And one of the ways that, that they facilitate that, you know, keeping us unequal under the law is the electoral college. And, you know, as it is right now in California, my vote is not worth very much, right? Whether I decide to vote, you know, Democratic or Republican or Independent or whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter because California is going to go Democratic. So, you know, why should I bother voting if it's going to go that way? You know, I vote anyway, right? Because I want to take part in the political process. And, and in this election, fuck, this election, you know, I'll wait in line for shit i'll wait in line for 10 miles to fucking vote this election right but you know i can understand why other somebody else wouldn't want to vote wouldn't bother voting and say why my shit's not going to count we already know how my state's going to go right well you know we need the only way we're going to be able to remove that apathy and get people involved <laughs> right in the political process is by counting their votes right and the only way we're going to count their votes is if we go to an actual model where their votes actually mean something. Because right now they don't mean anything unless you live in a swing state. If you live in a swing state, everybody wants your vote, right? All the politicians are coming. They're listening to what you got to say. Well, if you don't live in a swing show, they're in a swing state, they're not listening. They don't give a fuck about you, right? So that's, you know, that, that's the idea. We're supposed to be battling that political apathy. We want to get people involved in the country, right? We want to get people involved in the political process, okay? Because then you got greater buy-in. You know, that's where the mandate comes from, right? The mandate that, you know, the president runs on, the, the reason why they're the president and, you know, they're accepted as the president of the country, right? Is because, you know, that's where the mandate comes from. It comes from the vote. And if people don't fucking vote, they don't have a mandate. <laughs> See how this works? And then, and then people, you know, the country starts falling apart, right? And the, you know, the guy who gets the less amount of vote wins and fucks the country up, <laughs> right? We've already seen how that happened last time. So anyway, I think, yeah, it's time for us to move to a popular vote model. And I don't know, you know, if you have a, a defense of it, let me know what it is. But 
as far as I can tell, it's fucking bullshit. We need to fucking get rid of the Electro College. Anyway, that's all I got, folks. Adios.